Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and today I'm going to be building my capsule wardrobe and bringing you along. So I'm now in my second year of capsule wardrobes, and as I was thinking about building my fall capsule wardrobe for 2016, I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along and show you the process of building a capsule wardrobe. So let's get into it. So I've actually written a couple posts on my blog, plantbasedbride.com, about how to build a capsule wardrobe. And in my cruise capsule post from this past spring, I actually created a free downloadable worksheet for you to build your own capsule wardrobe. And these are the questions that I go through whenever I'm building a capsule wardrobe to really start the planning process off right. So I'm going to be going through those questions in this video, and I'll leave a link below so that if you want to download the worksheet for yourself, you can go ahead and do that. So the first thing I look at is how long I'm going to be wearing a capsule. Now for the most part for me so far, that's been a three month period, so a full season. So for the fall capsule wardrobe, I'm going to be wearing this wardrobe for September, October, and November. The next thing I look at is what the weather is going to be like. Now I live in Toronto and the weather goes through a huge change from September into November. And that's why living in Toronto, it's quite hard to do capsule wardrobes in both the fall and the spring because the weather can be all over the place from the beginning of the season to the end. So in the month of September, the weather's gonna stay pretty much where it's been for the summer. It's getting a little bit cooler, but we're still going to be in the 20s degrees Celsius. There's gonna be a little bit of rain, some hot sun, and a bit of a range there. Now as we get into October and November, it's gonna cool off, and by the end of November, we're probably gonna be in the five degree Celsius range, which is getting quite cold, but not quite into freezing weather or snow. So this wardrobe really has to cover a lot of different weather situations, from rain and cold, to hot and sunny, and everything in between. So that's something you really need to plan out as you build your capsule, if you don't wanna to have to be constantly pulling new items in as the season and progresses. So the next thing you want to think about is what your typical day is going to look like. What are you going to be doing for the next season? This seems obvious and for some of you, you may have a full-time job and you sort of wear the same types of things day in, day out. But for me, I live more of a freelancer lifestyle. My life can vary greatly from day to day. And so there's actually quite a few different circumstances that my wardrobe has to cover. So for me, a typical day could range anywhere from being home all day, doing errands or working on my blog, filming videos, to working in retail in a relatively casual retail environment where there isn't any real particular dress code to doing presentations in schools with a nonprofit where I need to be dressed in at least business casual and be very professional. And so I've tried to not only include pieces that will work from the warm weather to the cold weather that we will be experiencing, but also hopefully that can cover from very casual to business attire. The next thing on the list is to look at any special events or things you already know that are coming up that you need to plan for. Now I have a very special event coming up in September, I'm getting married. Of course, my wedding dress is a part of my capsule wardrobe and the clothing that I'll be wearing on my honeymoon also isn't included in my capsule wardrobe. And that's something that maybe not everyone sticks to and this is sort of a personal aspect of capsule wardrobes for people. I like my special events clothing to be separate from my day-to-day -day capsule wardrobe clothing. So I do try to fit as many different things as I can into my capsule and I definitely have things in there for going out on dates with Jason or going to see a show or whatnot. But for really special events like my wedding or if I was going on an audition, those things come from outside of my capsule wardrobe. So the next thing that I always do is come up with three words that I want to describe my style for that season. And this season, I'm sticking with monochromatic. As you can see, my wardrobe is almost entirely black, white, and gray, and that's how I like it. There's a touch of color here with a little bit of beige, a little bit of denim, but no other colors to be found. The next word I want to describe my style this season is minimal. This is another one that pops up pretty frequently for me. I like outfits that are simple, easy to pull together, and don't have lots of unnecessary layers or bits and bobs. The more minimal the aesthetic, the more I like it. For example, this jumpsuit that I'm wearing, it's all one piece, it's all black, and I love it for that. The last word I'm going to go with this season is edgy. 
Now, not everything I wear is going to be edgy, not every single outfit will be. For example, the outfits I put together to present in schools likely won't be too edgy, but for a little bit of a kick, because my outfits are so monochromatic and they're so minimal, I like to add a little bit of edge, for example, with a choker or other accessories, something to just bring a little bit of a kick. Even a dark lip can do it for me, and I really like bringing that into my wardrobe for a little bit of something unexpected and fun. The next up is what outfits inspire me. And this is what Pinterest is for. I have many boards on Pinterest and a couple dedicated just to style and fashion. If you want to check those out, I'll link them below. But I highly suggest using Pinterest as a resource to really see what outfits draw you in and then see what things are similar from outfit to outfit to really pick out the things that you can do on a simpler or more affordable scale that can still give you that general feel that draws you or attracts you to these different looks. Also, if there are bloggers that you really like, I would suggest following them on Instagram to see if they do outfit posts or to see what they're wearing day to day. It can be nice to see someone in real life and different outfits that they pull together that fit within their personal aesthetic. And the very last question is, what is your color scheme? Now, I already covered this in my three words that describe my style, but sometimes that's something that comes a little bit later. Now, a lot of people like to pull colors for particular seasons. They may go with their basic neutrals and then pull in a bit of burgundy or forest green or whatever. For me, it's pretty much evolved to always be the same, which is white, gray, black, and a tiny bit of other neutrals like denim or beige. So that is the general planning stage that I go through for every single capsule wardrobe. So again, I'll link that below if you want that worksheet so that you can use it to plan your own capsule wardrobe. An additional planning stage that you can add in at this time is picking your number. Some people like to pick their number and then force their capsule wardrobe to fit into it, and others like to build their capsule and leave it wherever it ends up. I've stuck to 40 items for my capsule wardrobes and kind of use that as my goal and my maximum limit, but you can pick whatever number you like, or you can leave it numberless and just build the capsule that works for you regardless of how many pieces you include in it. So the first thing I did as I was pulling these pieces together was to think about basics. And basics is always the very first thing I think about. Because a capsule wardrobe is going to be where all of your clothing is coming from, you really want to make sure you have those items that are things you're going to reach for every single day. What I like to think about is if all of my clothes disappeared, if they were stolen, if there was a fire, any of those circumstances, if my cats went crazy one night in my closet, and I needed to buy a new wardrobe, what are the things I would need to buy first? What are my basics? So a couple of the basics I wanted to make sure to include were these black dress shorts. They're from Club Monaco. They're a good length. They don't show anything inappropriate. They are very dressy looking, just plain black. They're essentially dress pants in short form. And because it's gonna stay so warm in September, I wanted something a little bit more formal that I could wear on those days that are just far too hot for pants. Another example of a basic is this black V-neck tee. It's actually a V in the front and the back. It's very flattering, it's super soft material, it's really comfortable and breathable. I got it from Anthropology when I used to work there, and I purchased this shirt in lots of different colors and used to wear them all the time to work, but the black one is the one that I've worn the absolute most, and I think it might have been in every capsule wardrobe I've done so far. Another basic for me, especially in the fall, is a neutral cardigan. I love this lightweight, long sleeve, long line cardigan from Forever 21. It goes with absolutely everything in my wardrobe. The cut of it is simple enough that it can look more upscale and dressy, but the gray marlin does make it also look a little bit more casual, so it can pretty much be worn with anything. And it's pretty lightweight, so it doesn't give a huge amount of heat, but that extra layer can make a big difference when it's a bit colder outside or in those transitional months. And the last example of a basic is this Aritzia cami. It's more of a dressy upscale material, which means it can be worn in a lot more circumstances, but it can also really easily be dressed down. And this is one that I wear all of the time. Once you've started figuring out what those basics are, you wanna just keep adding them to your pile. Don't worry right away if you have too many pieces or too many similar things. Just grab all the things from your wardrobe that you wear all the time or you see as basics for the things that you're going to be doing for work, for play, for home, everything. And once you have those in place, you can do a little bit of an edit and see if you have things that are similar. So in my wardrobe, I have two black t-shirts because I wear them so frequently. 
I did have two white t-shirts also when I was picking up my basics and decided to leave those out this time around because for me, I definitely wear a lot more of the grays and blacks in fall and having too many just casual plain t-shirts, while they definitely are basics, aren't really something that I'm going to need in this next season. So I decided to leave out the white t-shirts and keep in the gray and the black t-shirts this time around. Once you've kind of pulled everything together, you can start looking at how things go together and filling in the gaps. So for example, if you had a lot more casual things like this bleached out denim shirt or cut off denim shorts, but not a lot to wear for work, you definitely want to either swap out a couple things or add in a couple things that you can wear that are a little bit more formal and vice versa. Once you're happy with everything, I like to put them in a nice color gradation. And then that way also you can see the color scheme a lot more clearly, see if you stuck with what you wanted to do. If anything stands out that really doesn't go with the others in your capsule, maybe that would be better switched out with something that is more versatile. And this is kind of the time that's very personal. You need to pick out pieces that look great on you, that you feel comfortable in, that work in more situations, that go with more things that you own. This is something that is so personal and can take a little bit of practice. In some of my capsules, I picked out things that I never ended up wearing, and hopefully I've learned enough that this time I will wear all of the pieces as evenly as possible. In addition to looking at the casual versus dressier outfits and options, really think about those weather options. I like to do the clothing first and then look at the shoes. These are the vegan leather black Doc Martens. They bring a more edgy kind of casual look to all of my outfits and I love wearing those. They're also great if it gets rainy or kind of crappy weather. I also included two pairs of heels and these ones are both again vegan leather. A pair of black pumps and a pair of nude pumps. Very basic, they're the same pair. Pointy toe, orange heel, very classic. I also included my Native Shoes and Polka Dot sneakers. These I bought before I headed out on my last Disney Cruise Line contract, so I've worn them in my cruise capsule wardrobe and my summer capsule wardrobe. They're starting to show the wear, but I adore them, so I'm going to continue to wear them. Super casual, super comfortable, great for walking to work and being on my feet all day. I also included these black vegan leather Oxfords. They have a bit of a more dressy feel, so I could wear these presenting at schools, but still be more comfortable in flats. I also wanted to include my black high top chucks. Again, a little bit more of that edgy feel, super casual and comfy, and they can really bring any outfit a little bit of edge and fun and comfort. And the last pair of shoes are the ones I'm wearing. They're these Melissa Flats Vegan. They are nude with black detailing. They're super comfortable, and I think they're a pretty good transitional shoe from casual to dressier outfits. So with my fall capsule this year, I actually went a couple over my 40 limit, and I'm gonna keep it that way just because my experience of last fall was that I didn't have enough transitional items, enough things that worked in warm weather and cold weather, and I wanna to try to cover all of my bases this year. So I've gone a couple over so I can have another pair of shoes, and another couple options for this weird weather that I'm gonna be going through. So in this video, I'm not gonna do any lookbooks or outfits. I'm going to be making a couple separate videos for that for you guys to watch, but I am going to go through each piece and talk a little bit about why I chose it. I will try to keep it quick so that this video doesn't go on forever, but I always find it really interesting and helpful to see why people chose the pieces they did. So first off, this jumpsuit I'm wearing. It's super easy to wear. It feels like pajamas, but it looks really put together and dressy. I can wear it out to pretty much any occasion and feel very comfortable and look like I put in way more effort than I did. This tank top I talked about as a basic. This v-neck muscle tank from Aritzia, super soft. It's very casual, comfortable for wearing working from home or wearing at the retail store. Just an easy thing to throw on. Next up, I went with two white button downs, one on the dressier end and one on the casual end. Both could be worn to present depending on the situation. And this one here is great for just day to day if I want to dress it up a tiny bit more. It looks really cute tucked in at the front with some jeans. I can leave it open and layer it at the top underneath if it's starting to get a bit colder. And both of these are really versatile and helpful. Next up, I included this crop knit top. I love the deep V. It's super casual. It's a tiny bit warmer because of the knit. And again, this is something that's fun to layer for when it's starting to get colder. A knit crop top with high-waisted jeans and a sweater and a coat, and it's just really warm and cozy. And on its own, 
is also breathable enough to wear when it's a little bit hotter out. Next up, I included my beige trench from Forever 21. It's super lightweight, so I can wear it when it's warmer out. Again, a great jacket to wear when going to present at schools. If it's going to be slightly rainy, it's not water resistant, but if it's just drizzling, it can be nice to throw this on. Next up is this bleached out denim top. It's super loose fitting. I can throw it on, layer it with just about anything for a more casual, edgy look. Going on with my denim, I have these high-waisted cut-off shorts. Definitely very casual. This is a pair that I would wear working from home or working in retail on a hotter day. Next up, I have these ripped low-rise jeans from Hollister. I've had these jeans since Oh god, maybe high school. I've had them for a really long time. They're super stretchy and comfortable and I love them. I don't know if I'll ever get rid of them. Next up, I have these high-waisted dark wash jeans from Urban Outfitters. And I like to wear them out on dates for a little bit more formal looks. Next up is a basic scoop neck gray tee. It's from Maritzia. This one I have in white, black, and in gray. It's a really great basic, just a little pocket. Super casual and comfortable and goes with just about everything. I already talked about this cardigan. Next up, I have this dark gray lace-up crop top. This one's super casual. Again, it would be worn when I'm working from home or in retail. I'm keeping this one in here for those really hot days because I know some of them are still around the corner. Again, layered with that cardigan or with a little jacket. It can work into the colder months as well. Next up is from Aritzia. It's a super deep V crop top. It's a lot dressier in the cut and feel. So this is something I'd probably wear on a date night. I picked up this shirt and the black counterpart, which I'll get to later to show off my new tattoo because I'm excited about having this piece of art on my body and I wanna be able to show it off from time to time. Next up is a basic dark gray tee, again from Aritzia. I love this one. It's a little bit dressier looking. Um, just by the cut and the darker gray material. But again, it's just really nice for wearing day to day, super comfy and goes with everything again. Now we're into the black part of the wardrobe, which is about half of it. So we're getting into this top, it's from Express. It's actually reversible. The other side is a dark gray. I tend to wear it on the black side, but it's a really basic cami, again, in a more formal looking material. So this one would be great for presenting with a blazer on top of it. Next up, I have this lace up tank from H&M. Very casual, again, a comfy one for wearing from home or in retail, layerable and great for those hot days. Here I have the black version of that Aritzia crop top that will show off my tattoo. Next up is this swing crop top from Zara, a lot more dressy. Because all of the dress pants I own are actually high-waisted, it's appropriate for wearing into schools to present. Again, probably with a blazer or a cardigan to cover my shoulders. This is an other one from Aritzia. It's similar to that last one in material, very lightweight black material. But again, it's a little bit dressier looking. It has a V mandarin collar. It's a little bit longer, especially at the back. And this is another great one for wearing while presenting to be super comfortable. Next up, I have the black version of that t-shirt from Aritzia pocket. And here we have that V-neck t-shirt that I got from Anthropology. Next up, I have two super lightweight long sleeve shirts. These are great for pulling on on top of a tank top or a t-shirt when it's getting a little colder as another layer option. Um, they can also be worn on their own when it's not quite as cold out. Next up, I have this v-neck pullover sweater. It's a little bit heavier than those last two, but still pretty lightweight, so great for layering. Here we have the only dress in the Seasons capsule. It is also from Maritzia. It's the same cut as those two crop tops, the deep V with squared off bottom to show off my tattoo. Tight fitting, but not crazy tight cut that sort of loosens out a little bit. It goes past my knees, which is really great and has those long sleeves. So this is something I could wear out on a date in November and not freeze my little butt off. But I also wore recently and it was great in the warmer weather too. Again, very breathable and I just love this dress. Now we're getting into the jacket category. So here I have a basic black blazer. It's a longer cut, more of a boyfriend blazer. So it fits a bit more into my style, but is a great one and a basic for business casual because I will be wearing business casual when I present. This is something that I for sure need to have in my wardrobe. Next, I have my faux leather jacket from Garage. I've had this jacket for years now. It was relatively cheap, but it's held up really well. And it's great for a little bit of an edgier look. Again, when it starts to get colder, it's more of a cropped fit. So it looks great with my high-waisted pants and shorts. Here we have my one warmer coat. 
This is from Aritzia. It is a wool coat. I purchased it years and years before going vegan. I've had it for a very long time. Um, I'm continuing to wear it and use it until I can't anymore. I think I'm doing better service to the sheep who were sheared for this coat to continue wearing it than to get rid of it when I still really love it and can still get good use out of it. So this one is my coat for the end of November there when it gets quite cold or any days when it might snow. This is what I'm going to be going for. It's my one very warm piece in my capsule. Next up I have these high-waisted black jean shorts. They are pretty short, but they're still appropriate for wearing in retail and just wearing at home. They're really stretchy. They're from H&M, relatively inexpensive. I have the black dress shorts that I talked about earlier as basic. Now I'm into black pants. So here I have slightly cropped black dress pants from Zara. They are slightly high-waisted, and these ones are great, again, for these warmer weeks we're going to have in September while I'm presenting to not go with a full length dress pant but still be utterly appropriate for working in a business casual environment presenting in schools. These are also from Zara, they're high waisted leggings. They have a little bit of side detail and zipper detail that make them look a little bit more dressy and great for day to day rather than just a basic pair of workout leggings. My full length boot cut dress pants, I just got them from Beta Brand and I'm really excited about them. They're actually yoga pants, but they look like dress pants and they're super appropriate for wearing to schools, but again, very, very comfortable. Full length, they look great with a pair of heels because of the boot cut, but also work with flats. And I'm pretty darn excited about these. The only thing that I just like about them is that they don't have real pockets. And the very last item in my capsule are a pair of black skinny jeans. These are more low rise, they're from American Eagle, and I've had them for years and years and years. They're starting to get a bit faded, but they're stretchy and they go with absolutely everything. So there you have it. That's my fall capsule wardrobe for 2016. As always, there will be a blog post up on my blog going through my process, talking about my successes and failures from my summer capsule, and also with the graphic that I always make with all of the pieces up there for you to pin or save if you want as an inspiration. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you really soon in some lookbook videos from my fall capsule. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on those lookbook videos. Check out my blog plantbasedbride.com to see the blog post that goes along with this video. Check out plantbasedbride.com to see all of my posts about capsule wardrobe and minimalism if that's what you're into. Don't forget to follow me on social media, I'd love to connect with you and become friends. And if you really like what I'm doing here and want to support me, consider becoming a patron on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And I'll see you guys really soon. Bye guys.